Before I start discussing 1989's My Mom's a Werewolf, we need to talk about Crown International Pictures for a second. Now, Crown was an independent film studio that was in business for quite a while, 1959 to 1992, and cranked out numerous titles throughout the years, mostly drive-in and exploitation fare, horror films and sex comedies, you know. Tonally, their movies are all over the place, but sometimes there was fun to be had. And again, they hung around cranking out movies for a long time. Their library is pretty large. Many of their movies have ended up on Mystery Science Theater 3000, and their library now resides with Mill Creek Entertainment, so if you've ever bought one of those mega compilations of DVDs, you've probably seen a Crown movie. It was on one of these compilations that I watched one of Crown's final films, 1989's My Mom's a Werewolf. It starts as the story of two teenage girls, one of whom is the McDonald's neighbor girl from Mac and Me, at a monster movie convention. The convention, of course, is littered with Crown International self-promotion, as well as required shout-outs to Forrest J. Ackerman and plenty of appearances by Fangoria magazine. They end up getting their fortune told by Ruth Buzzy, doing all her Ruth Buzzy things. And it's weird. Movie history tells me that this should be a little boy's movie adventure, not a teen girl and her horror geek friend adventure. It's refreshing. Good on you, movie. All that was merely window dressing, however, as this is actually the story of Leslie, really hanging out on the couch here. <laughs> She's married to John Shuck, lucky lady, but of course he works too much and pays her no attention, so one day she angrily leaves the house to go buy a flea collar for the dog. And it's at the pet store where she meets John Saxon, being weird and eventually flirty weird. Anything I can do for you? I need a collar. A flea collar. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go on about my toes. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't ever apologize about your true feelings. He woos her and licks her and is generally being weird and gross, but also cool because he's goddamn John Saxon. And wow, I can't believe she's going to cheat on John Shuck. <laughs> also, huh, I just want to note that this movie is rated PG. Oh, okay, he was just gonna go Tarantino on her toes. Totally cool for PG. But then he bites her toe, because, see, he's a werewolf and they do that. I suppose. This is what snaps her back to reality, though, and she bails. Bleed it! Thanks for the thrill, but it's time for me to go. But despite not getting the full werewolf in her, she's got werewolf in her. And she starts to change, having weird dreams about an increasingly weirder John Saxon and also developing werewolf characteristics. Kinda? Oh! Oh! Wake up, Leslie. She's driving a nightmare. Meanwhile, her daughter from Mac and Me, remember her? Well, she's convinced that she saw her mom out with John Saxon about to have an affair with him. And she's kinda right, but she gets super judgy for a while, acting like a little snot towards her mom, and desperate to make her confess for some reason. Hey kid, why don't you go move in at the hobo camp under the overpass and leave your mom alone? Hell, mom consistently keeps telling her that she needs a boyfriend, which is this PG movie's way of saying, good lord, go get laid and leave me the hell alone. Leslie's teeth are suddenly an obvious issue, but it's Sunday, so she has to go see the worst dentist on the planet who appears to be having sex with all his patients. I swear this movie had to have fucked up any child that actually saw it, although I can't be sure this thing was ever even released. is PG. Later that night, it's time for a teenage costume party, and ah yes, the 1980s, when you could apparently go to a Halloween party dressed as a goddamn juggler and not get your ass beat. Oh, Mrs. Shaver, you got a lot of talent. Leslie, Leslie. Why don't you uh, snack on this while I go freshen up? If you want some dessert, come up and see me, okay? This movie is PG. She continues to slowly werewolf, which is not how I think werewolfing works, and the daughter remains committed to out her mom as being some kind of piece of shit for reasons that continue to not be clear. Eventually, she gets wind of what's actually going on, though, and her misplaced judginess suddenly becomes out-of-control concern. 
That's not a costume, is it, Mom? Of course it's a costume! Mind your own business! Mom, you're a... What the hell are you? Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Oh, wow. Blue balls on the title. Help me. My mom's a werewolf. There it is. She enlists the help of her nerd friend and world's biggest Crown International fan. Meanwhile, John Saxon has arrived to explain things to Leslie. As a werewolf. A what wolf? Werewolf. <gasps> and I need a werewife. A werewife? Has that ever been established before? Werewives? I need sons and daughters. Huh. And you, my love, are the one who is going to give them to me. <laughs> I suppose we're going to live in a warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> warehouse. I get it. Good one. Now the kid is just wandering the streets, desperately looking for moms to accuse of things. My mom's a werewolf. Well, now she's just going to keep saying it. Holy shit. Your mom's a werewolf. Really? Okay, stop. Shenanigans are, of course, how the movie wraps up, and in this case, it involves two people in masks tussling with one another in Leslie's bedroom. During all this, we learn that the neighbors have a sex dungeon, which there's nothing wrong with, but again... This movie is PG! Ooh, shoe. Ooh. Oh, ooh, that was good. Get that shoe. I want to smell that shoe. Please. The aftermath is notable because Kimmy Robertson from Twin Peaks wanders into the movie to deliver exactly one line. And also Marilyn McCoo from Solid Gold shows up as a reporter. My Mom's a Werewolf isn't good, but it's definitely watchable. However, that just might be my bad movie tolerance talking. A couple of jokes work, dozens do not, and the WTF factor is off the charts. What's supposed to be a kid's movie seems like anything but. I mean, it's from the director of Death Spa, and it has songs on the soundtrack written by the guy who played Deathstalker in Deathstalker 2. It's just all over the damn place. The draw here is John Saxon, who, sure, he's worked a lot over his career, but I honestly think he never got to have the career he deserved. He's much better than a lot of the stuff he appears in, this movie included, and has always seemed like he should have been bigger than he is. Still, the man worked. Almost 200 acting credits and counting. It's me, Malcolm whoa, McAfee. Whoa. I'm the neighbor. I live right over there. Oh. <laughs> Holy God, this movie is PG. 